Hi guys, and welcome to the channel. Hillbilly Military Modeling here with uh, another video of our current project, and that's going to be the Merkava Matamia in 135th scale. So this video is the painting and decals portion of this build. I hope you enjoy it. So the very first thing we're going to do is disassemble this vehicle. So we left uh, several items not glued <laughs> to, <laughs> to the vehicle uh, for the express purpose of being able to paint it easier and do our details. So the main armament, the machine guns, of course the turret. And we need to separate the upper hull from the lower hull. And we're going to remove our tracks as well. And all of our road wheels. So to me, is uh, polycaps uh, is a great invention. Uh, it allows us to be able to disassemble the vehicle into these smaller components, making it so much easier for us to do our detail painting. I also use uh, these alligator clips for some things. And I'm going to use a little bit of blue tack here to attach our uh, main armament. That way, I'll have something to hold on to while while we're painting it. Make sure it's nice and sturdy. So here I'm I'm using a piece of uh, white styrofoam. It's soft and it's easy to arrange, uh, like our road wheels and stuff. Also, uh, we did not glue the uh, tow cables down. So that'll make it easier for us to be able to paint those. And once everything is disassembled, uh, we're ready to mix our paint. So our base color is going to be this German Panzer Gray. Um, and I'm just going to thin it for my airbrush. It's about a 60-40 mix. So the whole idea here is to make sure that we cover everything in Panzer Gray. Uh, this being our base color, it'll give us false shadows if for some reason we miss a little area later on in our base coat uh, color. Uh, I find it easier here with the acrylics that over the bare plastic it's better to go ahead and lay down uh, a real light coat and then you can come back later and kind of fill it in. Uh, the paint sticks better on your second and third coat once you get that first coat down. So don't worry about it being uh, transparent just uh, get it on there and then you can come back and uh, add the depth and make sure that you've got all the little nooks and crannies and everything so I'm moving kind of fast with it but uh, we slow down a little bit when we add our second and third coat and so I build these up in thin coats Now the great thing about acrylics is that they do dry extremely thin, um, meaning that uh, if there's a little bit too much paint in one certain area, when it dries, it, it really levels itself out pretty good. So you can see here, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are painting at multiple angles. And I just keep rotating uh, here the lower hull and changing my angle of approach. That way we're covering, you know, like around the periscopes and the hatches and the uh, main armament travel lock and stuff like that. That way we're getting, getting paint everywhere we need it, which is basically all over the vehicle. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, especially uh, any additions like uh, the extra track sections and stuff like that. There's going to be these voids up underneath them, so you're going to want to make sure that you get all of that covered. We also spray the tracks. Now these are the rubber band style nylon, I think they're nylon, or vinyl, vinyl tracks. So we're going to coat those as well. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take and mask off the rubber parts on the upper hull. 
and I'm just using the purple painters mask tape to do that and a toothpick to help uh, get it pressed down in the crease now normally I wouldn't use a hobby knife to trim uh, the masking tape but there's no way to accurately get this profile so I just went ahead and used the knife right on the model just don't press too hard <laughs> nice sharp um, hobby knife and just score it and so we're going to take and bend uh, or I should say fold um, our masking tape to the inside now once this vehicle is completely assembled the inside of these uh, uh, mud flaps I guess is what we'll call them um, really can't be seen and here's the rear section it has the uh, flaps also so next up I'm going to roll up a piece of paper a little strip of paper and I'm going to stick it in the end of our uh, gun tube here our main armament and that hopefully will preserve the Panzer dark gray from overspray now we're going to do our pre-shading uh, with the uh, white that's Vallejo white mixed for my airbrush it's about a 60 40 mix paint and thinner and the concept I'm going with here is going to be um, light on high and we're going to leave it dark on lower portions of the vehicle so I start off here uh, with our armored skirts and I also uh, use the white to emphasize the front section of each one of the skirts kind of give us a little bit of different uh, paint contrast now if you angle the model correctly <laughs> you can uh, skim over the edges and do the upper portion here I'm doing the toolbox and down the side of the hull and we don't have to worry about overspray um, getting onto the top of the vehicle so the Merkava on the engine deck which is the front portion of the hull has all these little facets uh, these little panels with these odd angles and so we're going to come in with the Vallejo white and we're going to highlight those and hopefully that'll stand out so we're going to continue on with the same uh, pre-shading scheme by doing the top corners of the turret here again we have those uh, odd angles in the center of the turret so we're going to highlight those and we're going to continue around the hatch so basically we're looking at the high spots and here we are with all of our pre-shading done also notice that uh, we did just the top segments uh, on our main armament so IDF Israeli sand is going to be the base color of the vehicle and I do mix it for my airbrush of course and this is also a Vallejo uh, paint and we're just going to go over the entire vehicle um, laying down light coats and what we don't want to do is we don't want to oversaturate the surface with this color if we do we'll just totally obliterate all of our pre-shading and the whole point of the pre-shading is to have those highlights pop out so the real key is to stop painting uh, before you think that it is uh, the the color is opaque enough <laughs> so, if that makes sense because what you'll do is you'll end up uh, just filling in 
um, and just obliterating our appreciating. Now we don't want to do that. We, we want to be able to see that. And here we're doing our main armament as well. And we do our road wheels and everything. And here we are with all of our color on. It's a unique color. Um, I think it's going to look pretty good. And you can see our pre-shading here, how it's coming through from underneath and we haven't totally obliterated that so that's that's a good sign and we can see all those different angles on the front of the vehicle so that'll be some areas of interest here we're going to remove our masks now you don't have to do that right now but I went ahead and chose to go ahead and do that and we'll just move on with uh, our detail painting. So you can see that this uh, German Panzer Gray now looks like it's a light black. You know, is there such thing as a light black? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, not a NATO black, but you know. And also, we remove our little rolled up piece of paper, and you can see that we have that nice dark detail uh, down inside the uh, end of the barrel of uh, our gun tube. That looks good, so we won't have to touch that up. Speaking of touch up, we're going back to our German Panzer Gray that was mixed up for our airbrush. And we're just going to go in and take care of the overspray. Um, on all of our road wheels. This being a really thin paint, uh, I do have to go back and uh, put a second coat on it, but it's really easy to do. We're going to use the same Panzer Gray here to uh, paint the, uh, the rubber tires on all of our support rollers. Now since this vehicle has all these side skirts that go right down to nearly the center of the uh, road wheels, this stuff really can't be seen at all. Uh, so it's up to you whether or not you, you want to take and, and paint these up. I decided to go ahead and do it because, well, number one, you guys are watching. <laughs> so <laughs> I might catch some flack over taking shortcuts here. So, we're going to go ahead and paint those in. So next up, we're going to use this metallic gray. XF56 uh, by Tamiya. It's an acrylic. And uh, we're just going to paint uh, the drive sprocket teeth uh, with this metallic gray. That gives us the impression of... Uh, all the paint being worn off of these uh, drive sprockets where the metal tracks have uh, made contact with it. Now we're also going to go in with the same color and do our idler. So this idler is also the slack adjuster for our tracks and it's all metal no rubber on it. So I am painting it from the center out towards the edge so so that we don't scrape off a clump of <laughs> acrylic paint right on the edge where it can be seen. We just want that contact surface covered. So next up we're going to go back to our Panzer Grain and we're going to be painting all of our spare track shoes or track links. Now if you notice, I am leaving these little square patches that are actually plates. They're mounting plates that are used to secure uh, our spare track sections to the turret and also to the lower hull. But we're going to paint around these uh, little square plates and that, uh, in my opinion, would have been painted the same color as the, uh, the vehicle. 
and that'll give some visual interest there kind of break up that track shoe with being all one color and we're going to use the same uh, German Panzer Gray to paint the metal parts on our shovel so as it turns out the shovel is the only pioneering tool that's on this vehicle uh, that's that's visible So next up we're going to go to XF49 which is uh, khaki and we're going to paint the canvas item. So we got two canvas items on our Merkava. Uh, the one right here that goes over the main armament mantlet. I guess you can call it a mantlet. And uh, also our stretcher. So I didn't really mix this paint. This this is I've had it for a very long time. It's old. And I didn't mix it up quite well enough, so it does come out a little shiny, but we're not going to worry too much about that because we're going to uh, coat everything in a flat clear, which will just blend and dull that right down. So here we're painting the stretcher as well, just the canvas portion. And now I've gone back to uh, the Panzer Gray. Sorry I keep uh, jumping around. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, oh, I forgot to do that. You know, let me go do it while I'm thinking about it. Anyway, I'm painting these uh, rubber uh, bump stops. These are for the, uh, the hatches. The hatches sit on these when they're in their full open position. And also you can see that I did go ahead and do some detail painting on the uh, antenna bases. So those are already painted and also the dust skirt around the periscope in front of the uh, commander's hatch. I painted it flat black as well. Now to me it does give us uh, paint call outs and one of them is a uh, OD green which we're going to be using this uh, Vallejo parched grass for that and that is the painting of the periscope. So the top portion of the periscope is OD green and then we do paint a couple of details on the mortar on the side with OD green as well. And now in true to form I'm going back <laughs> to uh, uh, our German Panzer Gray and we're painting our periscopes. Now if you remember from the build video, these periscopes uh, are just thin Lexan clear plastic sheet that you glue into place so they're really horrible periscopes but uh, I decided just to paint over them and and kind of be done with them I think that looks better now we're going to take our IDF Israeli uh, sand gray and paint the details on our tow cables to me, it also calls out this red brown. And this red brown's used on these, uh, I guess it's their bindings on the cable. So we're going to paint that up with this red brown. Any red brown that you have will work just fine. And as you can see there, it gives some nice detail and contrast. So next up, we're going to use this light tan which is an enamel, uh, tester's enamel. And we're gonna dry brush over top of our canvas items. Here we're doing the stretcher first. And I, I did tape off around the stretcher so as to not dry brush the, the, uh, the rear of the vehicle. And we're also gonna use it on our main armament over top of the khaki color. And this will help pick out the, uh, the high points of the canvas. And so those are the creases and then the folds, which are the low portion, are still khaki, giving us a darker contrast. I'm not very good at canvas. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get better. That doesn't look too bad. We're going to go with that. 
So now we're going to take some uh, dark yellow XF60 and we're going to use this color to paint the metal portions uh, of our stretcher. So I imagine uh, all the aluminum parts would be been painted in a lighter color like this. And I do come in with uh, some Panzer Gray and paint the buckles. And then I come in over top of that with some buff. And we're going to paint the straps. So these are the straps that, that uh, hold our stretcher together. Not real sure if they actually hold it on the vehicle. Probably. They probably do. And yeah, we can see our buckle detail. So we've got one more item that we need to paint here on our stretcher, and that's going to be the handles. So true to form, I go right back to our Panzer <laughs> Gray, <laughs> and uh, we're going to paint these handles. These handles would have been a, a, a rubber, some type of rubber. Now we're going to do some dry brushing with this Tester's Flat Steel. And we want to get most of the paint off the brush. And we're just going to do all the edges on our machine guns. So the edges of these metal parts are the ones that uh, are going to get the most wear. The finish will be wore off and the metal will be visible underneath. And so we're going to give it a, a good dry brushing. We're also going to carry over with the same flat steel onto our tow cables. Now remember our tow cables are based, uh, base coated uh, in the before mentioned uh, German Panzer Grey. <laughs> so that's, that's my new black, Panzer Grey. So, and since we've already painted our tracks, the before mentioned German Panzer Grey. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to dry brush the details on our tracks as, as well with the flat steel. So enamels, they, they lend themselves easier to uh, dry brushing than acrylics do. At least they do for me. Uh, one day I'll work out a formula where I'll be able to maybe do that with uh, acrylics. So back to the buff, the XF57. Uh, and we're going to paint up the wooden parts on our shovel. And I'm going to come in with this panel liner, brown panel liner here, and just cover up the buff, simulate our wood. This is an easy way to do wood. And once that dries, I do come back in and do a little bit of uh, dry brushing with our uh, flat steel enamel again, just to pick out the edges on the shovel. Kind of emphasize that so it's easier to pick out and see. I just don't want to overdo it, but uh, a little bit of wire is, is necessary. Now we're going to take this flat red XF7 by Tamiya and we're going to paint the top lens in our tail light and then I'm going to go back to, you guessed it, Panzer Gray and this is the airbrush mixture so we're just going to let it flow into the bottom slot on the tail light lens which I have to come back and clean all that up with a little bit of a IDF sand gray. Next up is the X-22, which is a gloss acrylic clear by Tamiya. And we're going to coat everything. Of course, we let everything dry before we decide to coat it, okay? But uh, I, I put two thin coats um, over the entire model to help seal in uh, all of our detail painting and to prepare the surface uh, for our decals. 
After that dries, it's time to do our decals. So I do cut out uh, all the necessary little decal pieces that we're going to need for uh, the version that we're building here. And I'll be using this micro saw as a surface prep for our decal. So these are water slide decals. I drain off most of the water onto a piece of a paper towel here. And I shouldn't be using this uh, hobby knife, but I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, we're just going to slide that right off onto the area where the decal needs to go. And I'm going to press it down with uh, a cotton bud, or as we hillbilly say, a Q-tip. And making sure, or trying the best I can, not to cause it to move. We're going to put a coat of Microsoft on top of it and just let that dry. So next up, same process, a little bit of Microsoft on our fire extinguisher and we have these decals that go on the fire extinguisher. And we're going to slide that off right onto the fire extinguisher. Line it up as best we can and it, it's really hard to do since we're putting these decals over a curved surface and as you if you've built a Tamiya kit before you know that these Tamiya decals are kind of thick so they're not going to want to lay down you're going to have to force them uh, to conform to the part and so the way I do this is to line up the decal and then we're going to come in with the microsaw and just soak the top of the decal down and, and let it run in around the back edges because right now it's the decal on the edges are, are standing proud of the cur curved surface so as this microsaw dries it will just soften and pull this decal down in a nice round shape and that'll be okay so next we're going to do the decal on the rear of the vehicle same process, lay down the micro saw, remove the excess water. And I think in the past, uh, my not laying that, uh, removing the excess water uh, was causing me a lot of uh, silvering issues. So we're laying this down over top of the micro saw. And here I did experience a small problem. Once the decal was on the model, it did not want to move. So we kind of have to work fast here. I'm trying to refloat it using Microsoft. I just want it to slide over and get its center of this uh, rear door panel, and it just will not move. So we're going to have to quickly go to plan B, and we're going to have to peel it up and then replace it. All the time you gotta remember guys that this Microsoft is softening the decal so if we if we don't get it where we need it fast then we're gonna have an issue with possibly tearing it. So luckily we get it lined up and now we can go ahead and just roll it down, uh, press it down and then we'll put another coat of Microsoft over top of it and we'll move on to the next decal. Once those dry, we're going to come back in with our X22 clear gloss and we're just going to seal in all of our decals. And so I do feather the clear gloss across the top of the vehicle. Um, I don't want an excessive amount of clear gloss built up in any one specific spot. Alright guys, so here I've prepared a little slideshow for you to enjoy um, while we close out this video. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank all of my subscribers because if it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't be making any videos. Uh, also, I love hearing from you. Uh, make sure you leave me a comment, press that like button uh, if you like the video. 
And if there's something you didn't like, uh, let me know what that is too. I like to hear all comments, no matter what they are. Um, also, if you're new to the channel and um, you like this type of content and you've enjoyed this build so far, uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss the next video. Speaking of which, the next video we'll be doing the uh, chipping and uh, let's see, panel wash and weathering of the vehicle and our final reveal. So I've got to get all that done for you guys. So I will say that this is a pretty impressive model. I mean, it really is. If you just look at the detail that uh, Tamiya has incorporated in it um, and ease of build, uh, just a little small problem back when we were gluing our uh, upper and lower turret halves together. Uh, other than that, um, hadn't had any real issues at all with it. Um, none that I can pin on Tamiya. <laughs> so, uh, Anyway, I recommend this kit. Uh, if you haven't built one of these, uh, go out and get you one because they don't cost very much. And I, I know you're going to enjoy it probably as much as me, if not more. So you guys, stay safe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.